Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is Government Gone Wild edition. That's right, we've got three more bills, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Utah, which actually has two bills, uh, that would restrict drone operations. So we decided to uh, go ahead and do a special edition just talking about these. And we'll also talk about a drone at the very end. So let's get to it. Now the first bill is from Oklahoma, which would restrict state entities from purchasing or operating drones that are built or assembled by a covered foreign entity. We know what that means. A waiver of the uh, bill, which is HB 3068s, are actually available through the uh, state's Office of Management and Enterprise Services. So the waivers can be granted for criminal investigation, counter UAS, and difficult circumstances, in quotation mark, uh, whatever that means. Uh, under the bill, the state entities would be restricted starting on May 1st of 2027, so a few more years. Uh, next up is Missouri. We talked about them last week uh, with, with uh, the drone surveillance scheme, uh, not an update on that, and then also from uh, St. Louis, which was having some weird rules. So in response to the drone surveillance scheme that we talked about last week, there is a bill, it's called House Bill 1204, uh, which would ban surveillance by drone. Now, this one doesn't seem to be nearly as bad as the one that we saw in St. Louis uh, last week with Alderwoman Sonier. Uh, but we have some questions about this specific one here. Uh, what does surveillance actually mean? It's not defined. Uh, what constitute observation? Uh, nearly viewing through a drone camera, is that enough to be considered observation? Uh, the answer to the observation question could completely restrict commercial UAS operation if observing through a camera as a byproduct of a shot is not allowed. So we'll keep you posted on this one, but uh, please reach out to the bill supporter. We'll put links down in the description. Now, third up is Utah with two bills, one of which seems to be trying to control airspace. Now, the first bill, it's uh, HS 142, uh, sponsored by Ryan Wilcox, and it references recreational flying and 14 CFR section 101. That's a direct quote. Um, go home, Ryan, you're drunk or incompetent or both. Boom, roasted but recreational operation is now covered under 49 USC 44809. Uh, it's been like this since 2018. So whoever works for you to do these uh, writing of these rules probably should do a little bit better research. Uh, the bill would actually restrict operation over electric lines for public transport, uh, over critical infrastructure, and would limit part 107 waivers that are issued by the waiver office at the FAA, specifically waivers for operation over 400 feet because they're not allowing you to fly over 400 feet. Uh, they did a poor copy paste of some parts of part 107. Uh, if you're in Utah, please reach out to Mr. Wilcox, let him know that this is not acceptable. Uh, the second one is a proposed rule, uh, R914-5. Uh, it appears, unfortunately, that the public comments ended a week ago. This was uh, brought up to us by one of our students. Uh, Leaf Elder is the sponsor in this case. Uh, he wants to create a $15 per year registration fee to UAS. Now, there's only two other states in the country that do this, North Carolina and Washington State. Uh, as I said, one of our students reached out to us because he owns a light show, drone light show company, and he would have to pay over $10,000 in registration fees every year because of this rule. So uh, please see the link below. Again, contact Mr. Elder, even if it's uh, past the uh, common period. Uh, if you live in Utah, uh, we need your help. And the fourth one is the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, that's the CISA, and the FBI have published guidance on cybersecurity for Chinese manufacturer of UAS. Uh, the document does not take a side per se. Uh, instead, they provide some fact and information regarding possible cyber threats, uh, going as far as to say, identify and select the UAS platform that best meets the operational and security requirement of your organization, which seems to make sense to me. Uh, the fact sheet provides federal guidance and recommendations on how to mitigate possible cybersecurity threats, which also makes sense, uh, specifically from Chinese manufacturers of UAS. The document also includes references and other resources for those that may want to look further into it. Uh, we'll leave a link down in the description so you can uh, read it for yourself. Uh, in all reality, many of the rules and guidance in the document can also be applied to anything that is used to do anything online. So uh, think about that. All right, 
We're done with the government craziness, at least for now, until... I have successfully privatized world peace. Well, anyway, I won't say it. Uh, but last up this week is uh, ACSL uh, Soten. We talked about them before. They're a Japanese NDA compliant drone manufacturer, and uh, they have released the drone in the US. Uh, the Soten has a, a number of different payloads, including visible camera, uh, IR, plus visual, and then a multi-spectral camera. The drone uses a 94 watt hour lithium ion battery and uh, has a maximum flight time of 29 minutes, which is at the edge of acceptable, if you ask me. Uh, Soten has also a vision system and an infrared sensing system for obstacle avoidance, a maximum range of four kilometers, and then a number of available accessories, uh, including a smart controller. Now we've reached out to ACSL to see if they were willing to send us one for testing. Uh, we haven't heard back just yet, but uh, we'll see. All right, that's it. Go pounder on all this uh, government overreach, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like entrapment to me. Well, this is going to be a good one because uh, it's idiotic government overreach. Government gone wild.